peanuts antony uh, so sir shall we start or so you take the call sir uh, sir dr murli that sir is there okay sir sir is trying from the system uh, there is some glitches in the video okay sir so you'll just join in two minutes okay sir No, it's coming. Not coming. So we can see you, sir. Welcome back. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. No I think we are in time. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm speaking from Narayan Hospital, Bangalore. and to start the session we have dr girish who is the uh, consultant in pathology the topic is blood transfusion at components and calculation of how much to give in a given patient a very important topic you all are aware that blood transfusion is an important part of day to day clinical practice blood and blood products provide unique and life saving benefits to patients there is no doubt about it and standard practices include testing careful selection of donors screening of donors compatibility testing storage issue administration and then monitoring the patient for any transfusion related reactions and problems at narayan hudayalaya the daily number of uh, i mean the average number of uh, bloods collected per month uh, average is about 2500 and we transfer uh, transfuse about 7000 products uh, uh, every month which is a huge number and uh, dr girish is uh, with us he is uh, looking after the blood and we are really grateful that uh, he will be talking to uh, talking to us about blood transfusion which is an important component of our practice please pay attention and uh, we will uh, at the end of the session we'll have answers questions and answers and if anybody wants to ask questions please feel free to put it in the chat box and any comments are welcome with this opening remarks i request dr girish to start the presentation Let's start, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Girish. Girish, please start. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Good evening. everyone. And uh, at the onset, I would like to thank the Anba Association and Dr. Shrinath sir and Dr. Modi sir for giving me this opportunity to be part of this webinar. So I will share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Okay. So today I am going to speak about the blood components, which is an essential part in our day-to-day -day practice. So blood transfusion. Without blood transfusion, many of the surgeries can't be done, and is part and parcel of our day-to-day -day life. So today I am going to talk about the following: the blood importance of blood. preparation of blood components indications for the blood components of particularly red blood cells fresh frozen plasma platelets clear precipitates a brief about covid convalescent plasma and what precautions we need to take during the transfusion of these blood components so blood is a scarce source so it has to be used judiciously without blood uh, it's difficult to manage so benefits of transfusion whenever you want to transfuse the blood the risk should be minimized as much as possible 
whenever you are giving a single unit of transmission so that is to be avoided because whenever you are giving single unit of transmission that might be corrected by some other means by medicines or by other products so whole blood use we are stopped in nara health since last 8 to 9 years we are using the components only blood components since we are using blood components and whole uh, blood components quality control parameters plays a safe role so whenever the quality controls are good then only the safe blood can be issued to the patients india is facing a shortage of around 3 million units this was the studies in the pre covid era now in the covid era our stocks have been depleted a very much initially before march we used to collect around 2500 units now we are collecting around 800 to 1000 units only so everybody needs to donate blood to save 3 to 4 lives in their lifetime once in 3 months we are discouraging use of whole blood why your whole blood is a product which contains multiple elements like platelets granulocytes plasma which can be used separately for a separate purposes or individual needs so whenever you store the whole blood in 2 to 6 degrees celsius platelets and granulocytes lose their viability and they are just there with the whole blood nothing no use of it so progressive loss of labile factors like factor 5 or factor 8 will lead to no use whenever you give it for a coagulation factor defects so we are think, uh, we are talking mainly about the blood components because uh, it's a scarce resource we need to use it optimally of for each constituents only specific components are infused to the patients for example whenever the red blood cells are required we do not infuse them with the uh, plasma which will lead to circulatory overload or platelets which may be required for some other patient so whenever we do blood components properly our blood stores are increased our blood inventory is increased by the same donor we can divide into three parts and we can help multiple people so the today's uh, knowledge about blood component therapy is very vast and initially we were using to collect the blood in the blood bottles but now we have a specialized plastic pvc bags which are very uh, good and there is no uh, problem with that whenever we are using the bags we can divide this bag from these bags into uh, different types of bags single bags double bags triple bags and quadruple bags also so we collect the blood in these bags so normally the blood is considered as a drug so when we consider it as a drug the blood component preparation is like a drug manufacturing the components which you prepare is called as a drug manufacturing so all the quality standards which needs to be maintained during uh, collection during process during storage issue, during issue and transportation and the equipments used during this entire process needs to be in a quality wise and standard wise if there is any quality lapse in any one of the stages the uh, expired or desired result may not be available from the patient even if you transfuse it properly so what are the different blood components you know as we know pc is a packed red blood cells we are not using whole blood but we are using the packed red blood cells we are using platelets platelets in the form of rdp that is called as random donor platelets and sdp that is called as single donor platelets which is from a fresis machine next is the fresh frozen plasma cryoprecipitate there are some specialized products also like saline washed red blood cells frozen red blood cells liquid depleted components irradiated components the components which are can be irradiated are uh, wb uh, wbcs platelets and the rbcs can be irradiated now we will go in detail about the individual components so how is this blood component uh, blood components preparation done the normally the whenever the blood component preparation is done this uh, is done by centrifugation method in the earlier days when the centrifugation was not there the refrigerator centrifuges were not there what they used to do was just collect the whole blood in a uh, bag and keep it uh, allow it to stand in a refrigerator in 2 to 4 degrees celsius for more than 2 hours then all the rbcs used to settle down once the rbcs used to settle down the used to transfer the plasma into another bag and they use it as a packed blood cells so the simplest way a simplest method but the quality of this bag is not ensured that's why this method is not practiced now so whenever you are starting a, a component lab or a blood component separation unit in your blood bank you need to have a adequate space that is around 50 meter square adequate equipments different types of bags the double triple quadruple depending on the usage quality control program should be there and uh, technical manpower should be there and a license for the same should be there only then you can 
prepare the blood components in your blood bank. What are the equipments required? Refrigerator centrifuge is the main part, weighing balance, laminar airflow branch, deep freezers to keep the fresh frozen plasma, platelet incubators are status to keep the platelets, plasma expressor, tube sealer, additionally sterile connecting device and irradiation machine are required. This is an, this is an example or a photo of a bag, which is a triple bag. In this, there will be a primary bag in which the anticoagulant will be there, CPDA anticoagulant will be there, which will be around 49 ml in 350 ml bag and 63 ml in a 450 ml bag. So it is, these bags are interconnected and there is no, once the blood is collected and uh, uh, tubes are sealed, there is no chance that it can be exposed to the air or any open air infections can occur in this bag. So all the separation takes place in the closed system. There is no open system here. That's why these bags are more safer than the older ones. This is a quadruple bag. This again, it has a four components for four different blood products. First is the packed blood cells. Next is the fresh frozen plasma. Third is the platelets and fourth is the buffy coat. How do you prepare or how do you do the uh, blood component separation? Whenever the whole blood is collected in a bag, it is to be weighed accurately up to the milligram or one gram level. And then uh, since whenever we are using these bags in a centrifugation, so they need to be kept in a centrifugation, opposites needs to be balanced. That's why we need to have a two pan balance wheels there. So wherein we need to keep the required amount of bags there. One in a pan, two bags can be kept. So two bags should be kept back to back and then they should be, it should be equal. If there is a difference of one gram or at least less than five gram, is it okay? If it is more than that, then there will be imbalance in the machine and you will not be able to get an accurate results. So after the balancing, proper balancing, we need to keep the bags in the centrifuge, which is a refrigerator centrifuge, which will spin our centrifugation will take place. And then later on, the bags needs to be removed slowly and the plasma or whatever the product needs to be expressed out needs to be done. So this mainly acts on a uh, simple principle that centrifugation, since the blood cells have a different sedimentation coefficients, the whenever the sediment is, uh, centrifugation is done, the plasma will be at the top, buffy coat in the center, which consists of granulocytes and platelets, and the fat red blood cells at the bottom. So the protocol for preparation of a red blood cells and FFP is as follows. Whenever we are using uh, the red blood cells and FFP are to be prepared, that can be prepared only in a double bags. So triple bags will include the platelets, quadruple bag include the platelets and the buffy coat also. What we need to do with the whole blood, with the, take the whole blood, weigh it properly and centrifuge at a, uh, in a soft spin, which is around 200, 2000 revolutions per minute for around five to seven minutes at four degrees Celsius. And once the separation is, once the, the centrifugation is over, it will stop and we need to take out the bag as seen in the picture here, the plasma is at the top and the RBCs are at the bottom. They need to be kept in a plasma expressor machine or it is done manually or automatically and they need to express the plasma out. Once the plasma is out, it is just a plain plasma. When it is freeze at minus 30 degrees Celsius within four hours, then it is called as fresh frozen plasma. Whenever you want to do prepared platelets in a similar way, the whole blood needs to be collected. But here, the important thing to note is the blood products which needs to, uh, from which we are going to prepare platelets need to be kept at 22 degrees Celsius. Here also, again, the saucepan, which is around 2000 revolutions per minute as done again at a 22 degrees Celsius. Previously, we used to do it at four degrees Celsius for a only a double back preparations. Here, once we do that uh, at 22 degrees Celsius, red cells are prepared, red cells are separated and platelet-rich plasma comes out. This platelet-rich plasma is again done with a hard spin, which means around 5,000 revolutions per minute at 22 degrees Celsius. Here, we are going to express the plasma out. Once the plasma is expressed, the platelets are very tiny particles which are sticking to the bar. So we can't transfuse those platelets without any uh, fluid. That's why we need to leave around 30 to 50 ml of plasma and resuspend these platelets into them and then we can transfuse them. So before centrifugation, around one hour of resting time after the collection of the bag bag needs to be placed, proper balancing has to be done. The bags needs to be arranged back to back and proper uh, balancing and speed and time of centrifugation. Here in the centrifugation machine, all these can be programmed and we need to just press the which program we need to run. It is easier for us instead of setting the uh, revolutions per minute every time. And whenever we are taking out the blacks, gentle handling is very important because 
if you shake that the all the rbcs in the plasma get mixed up and the entire procedure has to be repeated in the platelet preparations there can be a of two methods one is platelet rich plasma method and the second is the buffy coat method in the buffy coat method we are going to remove the buffy coat also in the platelet rich plasma initially a soft spin is done to express the platelet rich plasma and then hard spin is done to express the plasma and the remaining will be the platelets in the buffy coat method initially the hard spin is done and we express rbcs and plasma out and then in the remaining back we do a soft spin which will express the platelet concentrate and the remaining will be the buffy coat here in the first picture you can see the rbcs which has been expressed and then the plasma is expressed out and the last picture last central diagram uh, wherein we have is a small bag which is buffy coat bag from which the platelets are being expressed so this plasma expression can be done manually or we have automatic tissue processors or tissue plasma expressors which can be used wherein it will automatically decide when to stop and when to block the plasma from the uh, red blood cells and plasma bag this is a picture showing uh, packed red blood cells platelet concentrates and plasma so there's one more product which you prepare cryoprecipitate this cryoprecipitate is a product which is uh, high in von willebrand factor and factor 8 and factor 13 so this is this product is prepared from the fresh frozen plasma we normally keep this fresh frozen plasma in minus 30 degree celsius once we want to prepare the cryoprecipitate that needs to be slowly thawed in a water bath which is refrigerated at 4 degree celsius or in a cold room which is maintains a temperature at 4 degree celsius or in a refrigerator blood bank refrigerator which maintains a temperature at 4 degree celsius this slow thawing will take around 8 to 12 hours for thawing once it is thawed it is hard spin is done that is around 5000 revolutions per minute is done at 4 degree celsius to prepare a cryopure plasma and cryoprecipitate that's why whenever you require cryoprecipitate it should be already available in the blood bank if it is not available if you want to prepare it it will take at least one day time or two days time for the preparation of cryoprecipitate so once you have prepared everything components for example rbcs wbc rbcs platelets and uh, cryoprecipitate and fresh frozen plasma you have prepared so how are we going to store them is the storing is same for all the uh, blood products mm -hmm. so in what temperature it has to be stored rbcs needs to be kept at 2 to 6 degrees celsius ffps needs to be kept at 30 degrees uh, minus 30 degrees celsius cryoprecipitate and cryopore plasma needs to be kept at minus 30 degrees celsius platelets please note that it should not be kept in any refrigerator the temperature which needs to be maintained is 20 degrees celsius plus or minus 2 degrees celsius what is the shelf life of these red cells red cells can be stored up to 35 days from the day of collection and if we are using an additive solution like sagam sagam consists of additional solution like uh, saline uh, adenine mannitol and glucose it will extend the shelf life by 42 days so the platelet additive solutions are also there available by which we can extend it to 7 days so all the red cells needs to be abo and rh match all ffp cpp should be abo match cryoprecipitate any blood group for any given without any uh, requirement of uh, cross matching or abo matching and platelets can be given for any group one plus nodal on that blood component therapy it is best and safe so the difference between a failure and success is doing a thing nearly right and doing it exactly right why i'm saying this is because we have done everything every effort to transfuse the blood and everything is prepared properly and it is given for the transfusion but from the blood bank the blood is issued but it is transfused later after 2 hours or 3 hours the temperature which needs to be maintained before transfusion is 2 to 6 degrees celsius but if it is not maintained the optimal quality of the blood is lost and it is not much of beneficial to the patient so that's why whatever we are doing we need to do it exactly right what are the principles of component therapy we need to identify the cause of deficiency which is the deficient factor of deficient component in part we need to replace only that component the third principle is the whatever the blood we are going to issue or transfuse to the patient should be safe as safe as possible to avoid the transfusion reactions to avoid the transmission of infections in the form of hiv hbcg hcv and to avoid the fluid overload in our nh we do idna testing that is nucleic acid testing to identify the hepatitis a hepatitis b c and hiv viruses to reduce the window period to make the blood more safer 
These are different blood components. Cellular components will have red cells, leukocytes, platelets. Plasma components include fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, and cryocode plasma. And these plasma derivatives are the ones which are derived from the fresh frozen plasma by fractionation. They will prepare the coagulation factors. They will prepare the albumin out of this, which can be used without any cross matching later. What are the benefits of this packed red blood cells? The packed red blood cells, since the removal of plasma is there, the less amount of protein, there is minimum allergic reactions. Since the volume is not required, only the RBCs are required, it reduces circulatory overload. Reduction of electrolytes is done because of removal of the plasma, which leads to sodium, uh, which is beneficial in cardiac patients, potassium and acid, which is beneficial in anemia patients, ammonia and citrate, which is beneficial in hepatic failure. How much hemoglobin is increased by transmission of one uh, packed red blood cells? Around one gram per deciliter per bag is increased. So we need to see the quality control of packed red blood cells. How are we doing it? So different bags will give different amount of uh, RBCs. That's why we need to collect a bag which is on a higher quantity. For that, the donor criteria needs to be met. So if we are using a sagam bag, then around 250 ml of blood is volume is available. If we are using a only 350 ml bag, around 150 ml of packed red blood cells are available. The hematocrit should be 50 to 60 percent if the sagam is used and around 65 to 70 percent if the CPDS solution is used. So what are the triggers? What are the levels at which we need to start the red cell transmission triggers? So if I ask anyone, someone will say hey, hemoglobin of 10 grams, hemoglobin of 11 grams, hemoglobin of 8 grams, but hemoglobin as per se is not an exact criteria, but we mainly depend on it. But optimal threshold for transmission is uncertain. It is mainly on the clinical judgment of the clinician, which is to be done. It is not to be done on hemoglobin measurement. It should be measured the oxygen saturation based on the oxygen extraction method. Oxygen extraction is a better method to uh, see the requirement of red cell transmissions. So, but since we can't exactly measure oxygen extraction every time in every patient, randomized clinical trials have been done by American Association of Blood Banks and they are suggested in asymptomatic patients without any symptoms, the transmission trigger for red cell transmission is seven gram per deciliter. But many cases we see that this trigger is not um, maintained. Initially, we used to do a liberal transmissions. Now, restrict trans tra restrictive transmission is the practice. So for higher transmission, uh, thresholds of eight grams can be seen in any other cardiovascular disease patients. But the main thing is, it is the clinical judgment which is required. The blood is not 100% safe. It can also lead to the transmission, transmitted infections or transmission reactions. Whenever it is given, it should be safe and whenever it is absolutely indicated. Whenever there is an acute blood loss of more than 30% of blood volume, only then in trauma cases, the red cell transmission or in bleeding, uh, surgical bleeding cases, you need to give the blood or red cell transmission. The acute blood cell symptoms, loss symptoms, everyone knows. So in a preoperative surgery cases, preoperative transmission should be indicated only whenever the hemoglobin is less than 8 grams or hematocrit is less than 22%. So in each institute should prepare a max, maximum surgical blood ordering schedule, MSBOS, which will help the blood banks or also the uh, surgeons to know that how much blood is required for each surgeries or different types of surgeries, depending on their hemoglobin levels and other levels. So the blood bank can approximately uh, prepare the same amount of uh, red blood cells and FFPs, and they need to be kept in the blood bank shelf only. Whenever it is required, they can be transferred immediately to the wards or the OT and then transfers. Whenever you are transferring uh, packed red blood cells, at least minimum two units are required for the therapeutic efficacy. If you are transfusing only one unit, then it is not needed. You can manage the other uh, ways. In chronic cases, HP less than eight is indicated for chronic anemia, for hemolytic anemia, thalassemia, uh, nine gram per deciliter is the uh, cutoff level. In pregnancy up to eight, we can wait. So normally, the these red cell transmissions are given in those patients who have a decreased bone marrow production of red blood cells in leukemia, in aplastic anemia, in decreased red cell survival like hemolytic anemia, thalassemia, in bleeding patients which can be traumatic or surgical. So red blood cells are given only to increase the oxygen carrying capacity in anemic patients for volume expansion, for hematonics, no, uh, to enhance wound healing, to improve the general well-being, this blood product should not be given at all. So once we discussed about the 
uh, red blood cells we come to leukodepleted red blood cells what do you mean by leukodepleted red blood cells normally there will be leukocytes which is present in the uh, any uh, whole blood and in the red blood cells also so we are taking out these leukocytes as much as possible whenever we take out or we reduce the leukocytes that is called as leukodepleted red blood cells so what does the what is the problem which is going to happen because of presence of leukocytes leukocytes are indicated or cause uh, going to cause the febrile non molecular transmission reaction hla aluminization trali or transmission of leukotropic viruses like cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus uh, can be happen or transfusion associated graft versus disease is one of the factors which can lead to because of the leukocytes so this leukodepleted blood cells how much leukodepletion are we going to do we are going to do the leukodepletion uh, in a whole blood normally it around 2 to 5 into 10 to the power of 9 per unit will be present in by doing a leukodepletion the residual leukocyte count will be less than 5 to 10 to the power of 6 and it can be prepared by a uh, it can be prepared by a uh, filter or a leuco filter which is shown in the figure leukodepletion can be done at three stages one is pre storage by while during collection in line for leuco filtrations can be done or after storage leuco reduction is done in a blood bank with a leuco reduction filter or bedside filtration which can be done at the bedside before transferring it to the patient which one is better among all the three pre storage leuco reduction is much better than the leuco reduction after storage because whenever the leuco reduction occurs after few days the the wbcs would have already broken up or fragmentation would have happened and which will not give the desired effect to and decrease cytokine production will also happen because of this so three storage leuco reduction is the best one but the problem is it adds to the cost so each leuco depleted bags will cost 1000 rupees more because the leuco reduction filters will cost 1000 rupees more so we also at nh we are doing whenever it is need based on the patients who require it and we select the bags which are around less than 3 days old bags how much is required to prevent febrile non hemolytic uh, transmission reactions the wbc count should be less than 5 to 10 to the power of 8 per unit which can be uh, achieved by a buffy coat method also and for to prevent hla immunization we need to use the uh, leuco filters which will reduce the wbc count by less than 5 to 10 to the power of 6 uh, per unit third generation leuco reduction filters are used which will give us log 4 reduction what do you mean by log 4 reduction 99.99% of wbcs are reduced so out of 10000 wbcs only one wbcs are left over in the bag what are these indications can should be use leuco depletion for all the patients if it is done if it is affordable it is good but if it is not affordable then it can be given to the patients who requires regular and multiple transfusions like thalassemia sickle cell anemia patients for all transplant patients like bone marrow transplant heart liver lung kidney transplant patients if there are any previous transfusion reactions then we can use the leuco depleted rbcs what do you mean by washed rbcs washed rbcs are the ones wherein we use the normal saline and wash these rbcs which removes the platelets plasma and some wbcs which will reduce also reduce the 20% of the rbcs also and which are used only in the patients with anaphylactic reactions or uh, iga deficient patients which will reduce the febrile non hemolytic transfusion reactions when the facilities for leuco reduction are not available this is a small picture where you showing the left side the poor guy is it's a cavity water issue in a similar way the transmission the ones who require really blood may not get the blood if it is used for the ones who doesn't require blood which can be treated by otherwise they are healthy don't use the blood in them only during uh, the ones who really indicated really required we need to use the blood in them the next component is the platelets platelets rdp or sdp so this platelets what we prepare from 350 or 450 ml of bag which is collected as a whole blood and separated into different components based on centrifugation in the blood component lab is called as a random donor platelets each random donor platelet contains around 5 to 5 5.5 5 to 10 to the power of 10 platelets which is suspended in a 30 to 50 ml of plasma which increases platelets by around 5000 to 10000 per microliter if it is given at the rate in adult at 1 uh, unit per 10 kg body weight what are the quality control measures we are going to see the swirling action whenever you shake the platelet bag it will give a swirling motion of uh, platelets which should be positive and the volume should be around 40 to 70 ml and rpc should be 
minimal or less than 0.5 ml ph should be maintained at 6 so effervescence effervescence platelets are comparatively much better than the uh, regular platelets rdb platelets these are known as single donor platelets which contain a higher amount nearly 4 to 6 times the platelets which are there in the sd rdp bag they are around 3 to 3 to 10 to the power of 11 platelets per bag the volume is around 200 to 400 ml and the one unit will increase around 30 to 40000 per microliter what is effervescence effervescence is normally we collect a whole blood in a uh, routine blood donation in effervescence we connect it to a machine the patient is connected to a machine while we put the insert the needle the whole blood is collected from the patient or a donor it is centrifuged in the machine the separate components are separated there and we will take or remove the components which are required for example here the platelets are required we take out the platelets and return other component like red blood cells and some amount of plasma back to the donor so the, the different types of effervescence can be there there is plasma effervescence platelet effervescence or leukophoresis wherein the respective components are taken out this is a machine showing the hematics machine for the cell separation cell separation wherein in the center part uh, the gray color one is the way the centrifuge is there and on the from the left side the blood comes and it is separated there and the platelets are plasma separated and again it is sent back to the same vein the single vein technique we are doing it at our nh what is the difference between sdp and rdp the number of platelets are more in sdp compared to the rdp in sdp around 3 to 10 to the power of 11 in rdp 5.5 to 10 to the power of 10 the volume is more 200 to 400 ml and leukocytes are less because we are using leuco filtered uh, sdps red cells are very traces ph is maintained 6 only thing is the uh, sophistication equipment is required skilled persons is required and the cost is more each sdp will cost you around 11000 rupees and rdp might cost you around 500 to 800 rupees depending on the test so advantage is cost availability of machine technical persons what is the dosage of platelets which is required many times whenever the clinicians say that we are given so much of platelets and there is no increase at all so it depends mainly on the patient's pre transfusion platelet count and the clinical condition so percentage of transfused platelets that circulates after transfusion depends on the spleen sequestration so normally around 60 to 70% of platelets which are transfused are circulating the remaining 30 to 40% are pooled in the spleen so platelet increments count increment will happen if it is given at a dose of 1 unit per 10 kg body weight for an adult by 5000 to 10000 per microliter for a child 20000 for an infant around 75000 if the one stp is given it will increase the count by around 30 to 40000 4 to 6 units of rdp is equal to 1 unit of sdp here i want to stress that the platelets can be given abo uh, incompatible platelets can also be given because uh, that doesn't cause much harms as platelets will have uh, very less quantity of red cell antigens occasionally in what are the indications of platelet transfusion decreased platelet production in conditions like aplastic anemia chemotherapy irradiation in increased platelet destruction like itp post transfusion papilla platelet sequestration which can happen in a hyperspinism at what level of platelets we need to transfuse platelets if it is a cases of active bleeding or features of dsc less than 50000 per mm cube If it is for chemotherapy is going to be given for malignancy less than 20000 per mm cube if there is a mucosal hemorrhage 10 to 20 mm uh, 20000 per mm cube if underlying hematological malignancy is there sepsis is there then uh, if it is less than 10000 regardless of clinical conditions if it is less than 5000 per mm cube and if there is an intracranial bleed even if it is less than 1 lakh you need to transfuse even if for the cardiopulmonary surgeries neural surgeries aftal surgeries if it is less than 1 lakh you need to transfuse the platelets contraindications as i told you ttp and hit in uh, heart surgery if there is a uh, microvascular bleeding only and platelet less than 50000 only then you need to transfuse otherwise it should not be transfused so platelets are given to control or prevent bleeding associated with documented deficiencies in platelet number and function many times platelet functional defects may be there uh, which in the patient which may lead to the platelet Uh, refractiveness so it should not be given in itp or ttp or hit this platelet refractiveness is an unwanted complication which will it is nothing but a failure to adequately raise the platelet count to the desired level which can happen in 20 to 30% of cases depending on the condition underlying condition 
लीकेज ऑफ सब्सेस फीवर स्पिनोमेगाली बर्न्स लिवर डिसीज और मासिव ट्रांसफ्यूशन इसका यहाँ पर इम्यून मीडिएटेड मल्टीपल ट्रांसफ्यूज और प्लेटलेट स्पेसिफिक ऑल एंटीबॉडीज इज देयर प्रेजेंट देन आल्सो दिस प्लेटलेट रिफ्रैक्टरीनेस कैन हैपन हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई दिस प्लेटलेट रिफ्रैक्टरीनेस इज प्रेजेंट इन अ पर्टिकुलर पेशेंट और नॉट द वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट द पोस्ट ट्रांसफ्यूजन प्लेटलेट काउंट आफ्टर 1 आवर ऑफ ट्रांसफ्यूजन एंड सबट्रैक्ट द प्री ट्रांसफ्यूजन प्लेटलेट काउंट व्हिच इज पर माइक्रोलीटर फॉर लेवल्स बॉडी सरफेस एरिया इज मल्टीप्लाइड विद दैट व्हिच इज इन मीटर स्क्वायर बाय द नंबर ऑफ प्लेटलेट्स व्हिच आर ट्रांसफ्यूज इन अ बैग so this corrected count increment is the one if it is less than 7500 at one hour then it indicates that is patient is having a platelet refractoriness we need to identify that cause and then transfuse the platelets otherwise it will be a waste of platelets into them how to manage these platelet refractor patients we need to see for any platelet antibodies are present in those patients if it is negative it can be other clinical factors and drugs If it is positive, then HLA match platelets needs to be given to those patients, and platelet cross matching can also be done. So FRSS platelets are much better, and leukocyte reduced platelets using a third generation leukocyte reduction with an HLA matching platelets should be given to those patients who are having a platelet refractoriness. Granulocytes normally uh, it is not done in all centers. Here we collect the granulocytes. The limited indications are transient and reversible leukopenia. It is absolute neutrophil count less than 500 per microliter. Neonatal septicemia, severe fungal infections are the only limited indications. The risks are trolley and transmission of cytomegalovirus. So the quality control is whenever the granulocytes are transfused, it is better to collect in a uh, FRSS machine. So it gives a superior method and which needs to be stored at uh, after collection stored at 20 to 24 degrees Celsius and transfused within 24 hours. One unit FRSS unit of granulocytes is equivalent to 18 to 20 buffy codes. So instead of pulling 18 to 20 and increasing the risk, better to transfuse one unit of granulocytes collected by a FRSS machine. So now the cellular components are over. Now coming to the acellular components. Acellular components are fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, and cryocooled plasma. As we know that we are going to keep this fresh frozen plasma in a minus 30 degrees Celsius, which is to be Prepared within six hours of collection of a whole blood, which contains a fresh frozen plasma contains all the coagulation factors and protein C and protein S, which is the main source for cryoprecipitate. Also, from the fresh frozen plasma only, we are going to prepare the cryoprecipitate. What are the quality controls? The volume needs to be uh, approximate. The factor eight should be at least seventy international units per bag. Fibrinogen needs to be around four hundred to four hundred milligrams, and usual dosage is around ten to fifteen ml per kg. Whenever is to be used it needs to be thawed because it is to be taken from the minus 30 degree celsius and whenever it, we are going to thaw slow thawing is required around 10 to 15 minutes is required for each bag to thaw at a 37 degree celsius so it can be issued without compatible testing if uh, screening is done already antibody screening is done already each unit will increase the clotting factors by 4 to 5% and fibrinogen by 10 mg per day so based on this if there is a fibrinogen deficiency we need to calculate the dosage which is required and then we need to order the ffps the main indications are coagulation factor deficiency since it is full of coagulation factors so congenital or acquired coagulation factor deficiencies and if it is a reversal of warfarin anticoagulation and if the patient is bleeding then we can use it the dic and massive transfusions we are using the ffps fresh frozen plasma is always given uh when the patients with documented deficiencies are who are at risk of hemorrhage for volume expansion as a nutrition supplement it should not be given cryoprecipitate as i told you it is a precipitated proteins of plasma there is fresh frozen plasma and which is rich in factor 8 one milligram factor fibrinogen and fibronectin and a single unit of fresh frozen plasma within the 6 hours it is thawed then only from that it should be prepared if it is more than that the cryoprecipitate should not be prepared from that bag so whenever you are preparing a slow thawing is required at 2 to 6 degrees celsius after centrifugation we we'll, uh, what are the precipitated uh, cryoprecipitate is there we need to suspend it in around 10 to 15 ml of plasma so once before use it should be again thawed as we thaw for the fresh frozen plasma we need to thaw it around 37 degrees celsius and store at 2 to 6 degrees celsius and it should be used within 24 hours what all this cryoprecipitate will contain it will be around 10 to 15 ml volume low volume 
compared to the fresh frozen plasma when you require only the factor 8 of fibrinogen you can use the precipitate and it also contains fibronectin which will help in burns patients or patients with septic shock indications hemophilia von willebrand factor dic or massive transfusions dosage is 1 unit per 10 kg cryopur plasma which is uh, one which is after removing the cryopurpid the remaining is the cryopur plasma which is deficient in mineral several coagulation factors and which can be used only in plasma exchange these plasma derivatives are the ones which are prepared from the large pool of human plasma whenever there is an excess plasma which is available in a blood bank which are given to the fractionation centers these fractionation centers will pool all this human plasma after testing they will prepare albumin or uh, particular coagulation factors this does not carry any viral transmission compatible testing is not uh, required for these patients which can be used uh, in hypovolemia or shock or therapeutic plasma exchange these human albumin solutions can be used now coming to the products which has to be irradiated why the irradiation has to take place irradiation has to take place to prevent the transfusion associated graft versus host disease how will it occur it occurs whenever we uh, issue the blood bags which are liquid depleted it is fine if it is not liquid depleted the whole blood whenever is given or packed vessels without liquid depletion is given these donor wbcs which are present in the bag will go into the recipient and act as a foreign for that patient so if the recipient is immunocompromised already then these donors wbcs can mount an attack and which will lead to transmission associated graft versus host disease and this uh, that is the same reason we need to avoid the uh, blood products which are from the first degree relative of the patient so irradiation is done to prevent this ta gvh2 this is a gamma irradiator wherein we need to keep the blood bags in a small uh, chamber after uh, 25 gyrates are uh, shooted at it in 10 to 15 minutes and then the irradiation product is taken out and it is labeled as irradiated factor blood cells it is done for platelets granulocytes and also the uh, factor blood cells who needs the irradiated products bone marrow transplant patients fetus receiving intrauterine transmission patients treated with immunosuppressive drugs patients with hematological and oncological disorders congenital immunodeficiency syndromes and directed donations are the ones who require irradiation a brief regarding the covid convalescent plasma this covid convalescent plasma is uh, collected from the donors who are uh, recovered from the COVID infection, who are male donors and early parents female donors, more than 50 kgs, 18 to 60 years. So they are, should be reactive for SARS COVID IgG antibody. So actually, the neutralizing antibody titers needs to be done. Since their facilities are not available, we are depending on this SARS COVID IgG antibody for the time being. After resolution of symptoms, 14 days prior to the donation, with one RT PCR negative, they can donate. Or if it is more than 28 days, after resolution of symptoms, they can donate with or without RT-PCR reports. Who needs to donate? Uh, any person who is recovered from infection can donate. What are the tests to be done? CBC, COVID antibody reactive and serum proteins needs to be done. Who can do? Any blood bank with a plasma fluorescence license can do it. How much to collect? 500 ml to at a time. Around 24 times per year. Whom to give? In a moderate to severe COVID infection patients, it can be given preferably in the first 10 days. Prognosis is, appears to be better, but not in all uh, groups, in some groups only. How to transfuse? So fresh blood is not required to anyone. So don't ask for fresh blood. Single unit transfusion is not required. Nutritional anemia treated to be with a nutritional guidance, not with a blood. Whenever you want to transfuse, ask these four questions. Why to transfuse? What to transfuse? How much to transfuse? And how to transfuse? The last infusion of this or transfusion of this blood components. Proper identification of the blood bags and the patient is very much important at least twice before transfusion. The clerical errors will lead to fatal reactions whenever the blood product which is meant for other person is given to with some other group for example B group is given to A group or A group is given to B group which will lead to severe uh, fatal reactions. Whenever you want to use an intravenous fluid for this reducing the viscosity only the normal saline has to be used. Other products should not be used. Medication should not be added to same IV line. Normally, we bring uh, clots might be present in a uh, blood component, so we need to use the 
blood uh, blood filters only blood warmers are uh, to be used only whenever it is essential otherwise it should not be uh, used at all so CV, uh, speed of infusion how much speed is going to do whenever there is a pressure right infusion pumps are available 60 drops of made around 2 to 40 ml per hour can be transfused and one unit should be transfused in one or two hours maximum limit is around four hours in massive bleeding if you are want to transfuse in a faster rate use white bore needles in severe anemia heart failure the rate of infusion needs to be reduced and diuretics diuretics needs to be used rate of transfusion rbcs can be transmitted at 150 to 200 ml in an adult around teen children to 2 to 5 ml per kg per hour and ffts should be transfused within 20 to 30 minutes as a rule whenever you are infusing any blood products the first 15 minute rules is very much important whatever the reactions are going to happen major reactions are going to happen in the first 15 minutes that's why monitoring every 2 to 3 minutes the uh, blood transfusion product or blood transfusion is very much important monitor first 15 minutes and afterwards once in every 30 minutes is fine platelets needs to be administered immediately and rbcs and uh, ffts can be administered after removal from the refrigerator within 30 minutes these few undesirable practices are always done at the uh, ward level which needs to be avoided blood warming by hot water delay in transfusing of tissue from the blood bank use of unmonitored refrigerators for storage in nursing stations many nursing stations might have the refrigerator to keep this blood which is issued from the blood bank which should never be there no monitoring of rate and duration just simply giving instructions to sister and sister will transfuse at her will routine pre transfusion medications for all patients will uh, prevent identification of transfusion reactions use of transfusion set for more than one unit so preferably for in a setting of 4 hours it should be used and then afterwards a fresh unit is to be used fresh transfusion set is to be used addition of drugs to blood bags should be totally avoided the safest transfusion safest blood is the one which is kept on the rack on the blood bank rack and not to be used who defines the transfusion of safe blood blood products to treat a condition leading to significant morbidity or mortality only then we need to use the blood otherwise we should not use the blood misuse of blood happens because readily available inadequate patient evaluation no sound scientific reasons that's why the misuse of blood will happen so we should appreciate the good things at what amount of blood loss the blood needs to be used more than 20 per 30 percent only then the blood needs to be taken if it is more than 50 to 100 percent then definitely red blood cells albumin and fps are required repeated trans, uh, febrile reactions then preferably use liquid reduced irradiated products intrauterine red cell transfusions o negative rbcs should be used or the mother compatible rbcs needs to be used for exchange transfusion in immunosuppressed patients always use irradiated liquid depleted uh, platelets and rbcs in hemodialysis use packed cells and don't use uh, whole blood in hemoglobinemia give immunoglobulins anemia bone marrow hypoplasia packed blood cells needs to be used whenever there is a particular Uh, factor deficiency use the factor 8 concentrates in hemophilia a factor 9 complex in factor hemophilia b the last and take home message is do not give blood when indicated give blood only when it is absolutely indicated thank you sir thank you everyone thank you girish for that excellent uh, presentation on blood and blood components a lot of important points have been covered in the last uh, 40 45 minutes most really relating to blood components indications of rbc transfusion what is leuco depleted red blood cells and uh, how to store blood and uh, what are the indications of platelets fresh frozen plasma cryo precipitates etc so the topic is open for discussion anybody wants to uh, ask any question please put it on the chat box um there is one question which is put here i would like to know if trali could be suspected in ot presenting as low pot fio2 ratio that is the first question the question is if trali can be suspected in ot presenting as low pot fio2 ratio 
in the operating room yeah it can be suspected sir because of this the answer is yes actually you have to consider it, uh, the other thing is uh, if the if there is over transfusion that also can you manifest as reduced po2 so you have to auscultate the chest and see if there are any rails and then clinically if the airway pressure has gone up you have to have a differential diagnosis when the po2 has come down and also rule out other causes of fall in the po2 so trally will come in the differential diagnosis of uh, decrease in the po2 when blood transfusion is given so this uh, now this has to be certainly has to be considered and it can be confirmed only after chest x ray when there are um, bilateral chest infiltrates after the case is done and till that time you have to increase the po2 and maintain the peep if it, the patient can tolerate it that will be my answer for that the other question which is asked is uh, evidence of desmopressin role in platelet dysfunction uh girish any idea about desmopressin i need to check it sir sorry for sorry for that to check uh, desmopressin is used to use as a sort of uh, prophylactic agent to reduce blood loss especially if there is platelet dysfunction suspected uh, um, and uh, it it has some role in the management of uh, these patients and the neonates need matching rh factor or blood group to transfuse cryo or platelets so it if it is rh matching factors is not required for whenever the transfusion of platelets is more than 4 units then abo compatible units needs to be given if it is only 1 okay. unit it is not required when it is more than 4 units preferably abo match needs to be given to both adults and even the neonates very good that's it The next question is: What is the incidence of infection following random donor platelet transfusion? So, random donor platelets is the one which is kept in the normal temperature, that is around room temperature between 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. That is the chance of infection are very high. That's why we need to maintain it in a proper temperature all the time. Even when it is issued from the blood bank, if it is transfused, right. that's why we say it is to be transfused immediately. If it is kept for more than half an hour and then transfused, the chance of infections are high. Uh, that is very important point. So here I would like to stress the need for transfusion. How long can you give the keep the PRBC, that is platelet blood cells, once it is issued from the blood bank? How how quickly? The bank guideline says. Uh, as per the national blood transfusion council 30 minutes within 30, 30 minutes. minutes you need to start or you, you, it, has to, yes. it has to be maintained in a box which maintains the temperature in 2 to 6 degrees celsius and suppose uh, suppose the the surgery is uh, complicated and uh, uh, the we get some two units of blood beforehand and keep it and ultimately you find that the patient does not actually bleed and uh, um what will happen to that blood which has been already brought into the theater so if it is not the whenever any blood product is kept in ot shelf also before transfusion it has to be if you are not going to use it within half an hour then it is to be maintained in a cold box which right, maintains right. the temperature of 2 to 6 degrees celsius very very important the, way, the blood products after returning to blood bank is a waste and we have to discard that blood very good this point must be noted by everybody who is listening to this lecture so you get the blood only when it is necessary and if you are uh, not able to use it as soon as it is possible you have to keep it in the cold chain so that uh, the blood will uh, remain viable and it can be safely given uh, at the time required very important point what is the policy for ffp how long can you wait for ffp once it is issued once it is issued it has to be transfused at the early means within 24 hours it should be maintained again in 2 to 4 degrees celsius right But, uh, after thawing which has to be used within 24 hours within 24 hours this point also has to be maintained and uh, made note of and platelets how about platelets platelets needs to be transfused immediately sir immediately very good very important points and the next question is uh, uh One unit of PC can utilize three hundred ml of Ringer lactate of after that the blood may clot. Uh, 
<laughs> this is a comment. This is a comment. Okay. One unit of PC can utilize 300 ml of ringer lactate after that blood meat clot. I don't know what. Not be used at all. Not be Along used. the same line should not be used where the ringer lactate is used. Right, right. COVID convalescent plasma therapy is there need for separate license for ICMR or government? No, only the ones which have the plasma pharesis license can do it. Plasma pharesis license. Plasma pharesis license should have and then they can do it. The next question, a lot of questions for you. I think you have you no no Is there any role of cryoprecipitate in MTP? Uh, what is it? Sir? Of... This is medical termination of pregnancy. Is there any role of cryoprecipitate? A cryoprecipitate role depends on the values. If you have any abnormal values, then only it is indicated. If there is a fibrinol right. deficiency or if there is established deficiency, actor deficiencies needs to be identified, then only it should be given. It is blind, it should not be given. That's right. Is it safe to transfuse blood tinged FFP, cryo, or platelets? Okay, whenever there is a blood tinge is there, preferably it should be given to the same blood group patients. It That's should not be given to the patients without ABO compatibility. That brings in the question of if you, when you are using RDP which contains uh, some RBCs, is cross matching needed? Cross match is not needed, but at least if it is more visible, grossly visible, then definitely cross match is required. If it is just tinged, then for example, A group, A platelet should be used to A platelet, A group persons only, B group, right. B platelet should be used to B group persons only. That's right. Do you have to have a filter for platelet transfusion? What's up? Do you need to have a blood filter for platelet transfusion? Definitely, sir. For all the products, we need to use the blood filter only. Many times for FFPs and platelets at places they are not being used, but yes. it should ensure that they should use the blood filter. Next question is, is it true that uh, uh, nowadays no prophylactic role of FFP, it is being toxic instead? That's what is the question. That's why the indications are very low. Only congenital coagulation factor deficiencies are there. And which if it can be prepared, recombinant uh, factor rates and other things are already available in the market. So you are introducing the chance of infection because whatever the blood we collect may not be 100% safe. So Correct. prevent as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. I, I would also add that if a prophylactic effect, if FFP may be needed, if the patient's INR is high, what for is example, it is 1.5 and more, more than 1.5 and we have to do a surgery which is uh, to be done fairly quickly. Definitely. We can uh, use prophylactic PFFP to be able to bring the INR to about 1.5 and then start. The dose is about uh, 10 to 15 ml per kilo. Yes, and then uh, you may repeat if the time permits, you can repeat the INR again after giving the FFP and then decide upon this the course of action. Uh, if we have uh, time, I'll ask another three, four questions are there. Definitely. The other question is pre-op fibrinogen level should be done in patients with high risk of bleeding before cardiac surgery. Do you think pre op fibrinogen level should be done in patients with high risk of bleeding? If there is high risk of bleeding, basic investigations are done already. PT yes. would be more than enough. If there is abnormal, then definitely it should be done. Yeah, this, I, I would also add that if patient is having a high risk of surgery, we should uh, have the blood products and the blood ready in the arranged uh, appropriately in the blood bank and carry on the surgery. And all the patients who are at risk of blood uh, um, bleeding risk may not actually bleed. Sometimes they don't bleed. So as long as it is available, you can carry on. And also you can take recourse to advanced level of your anticoagulation monitoring, like, uh, I mean, the coagulation monitors like PEG or Rotem, and then decide upon which component to give appropriate to that patient. The next question is, uh, is there any role of cryoprecipitate in massive transfusion protocol? Massive transmission protocol, we normally give one, 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 that is plate, uh, one RBCs, one FFP, and one platelet. Yes, so I agree with you. The may not be required, fresh frozen plasma is more than enough. What is the role of pre medication in blood transfusion? Pre medication is not required because whenever the pre medication is given in all the, uh, patients, it will hide the transfusion reactions. We will not be able to identify the transfusion reactions at all. Correct. So Correct. Correct. Only the known, already repeated uh, transfusion reactions are there, then only it should be given. Otherwise, it should not be given. I agree. I agree, I agree with that. And also in patients, uh, somebody asked about uh, prophylactic use. 
if you have a patient who is uh, likely to bleed depending on the patient characteristics we may take recourse to anti fibrinolytic agents like ranexamic acid which have been found to be reasonably safe so that you can uh, this can be used as a blood salvage uh, sorry sorry blood saving technology next question is uh, we find that filters on transfusion sites often get blocked during cryopreservation transfusion any suggestions for the same filters on transfusion sites often get blocked during cryopreservation transfusion because it's a practical it, problem yes yeah if it is used the same uh, transfusion set which is used for rbc is used for cryopreservation definitely it will block so fresh transfusion sets needs to be used i think so the i agree core size is 170 microns it should not definitely uh, block it if the fresh is one is used i agree with that and uh, girish i think that uh, finishes the questions which are listed here and uh, the last question probably is what is the first sign of mismatch of blood transfusion intraoperative in intraoperatively what would be the first sign of mismatch blood transfusion uh, it depends on the what mismatch has happened right Right. Depending on that only the reaction will happen. It's Could it be right. hematuria? Could it be it hematuria? Hematuria. Or hematuria. The patient is having a catheter and urine is coming. Hematuria. hematuria. And uh, other hemodynamic uh, in, uh, changes, changes with the tachycardia and uh, uh, hypotension also manifest. Manifest. I think that's all I have now. And uh, I think you have become popular because so many questions directed to you. Please, thank you so much. Well done. No problem, sir. You have cleared so the many. Future questions are there. Let them put it in the group. Let all yes, can yes. be transferred to me. Yes, I think this is one of the popular uh, and by lecture series. Thank you very much for joining us. We learned from interacting with you, and I hope you will continue to uh, teach the DNB trainees and other residents. will be benefited by this important very important topic on blood transfusion and uh, blood component therapy thank you very much and uh, we look forward to having you again thank you for all the thank you girish thank you thank you sir thank you everyone thank you